What is up, my beautiful people out there? I am Brendan. I'm a full stack developer in Brooklyn, New York. And today I'm going to be talking about the difference between Java and JavaScript. First off, are they similar? No. I know, it's hard to believe, but they're actually not similar at all. Uh, the only similarity they have is the fact that Java is in both of their names. Why do they both have the word Java in their names? Well, that's the first thing we're going to be talking about in this video today. Their history. Their history is what intertwines them the most. What else am I going to be talking about in this video today? Well, defining features of each language. That will be mostly syntax. Uh, I'm also going to be talking about what you can build with both languages and the current state of hiring in Java and JavaScript. So without further ado, let's get into it. Intro video go. Pretty much the only reason I'm covering this topic today is because of the simple fact that the letters J A V A are in the name JavaScript. Aside from that, there's really no reason to pick these two to compare. While this video is Java versus JavaScript, I could have just as easily created a Python versus JavaScript video or a donut versus Dorito video. Both words have the letters D-O in them, and both are equally delicious, but the comparison doesn't really make any sense. They're not even in the same snack category, though they are both considered snacks. The same thing can be said about Java and JavaScript. They're both programming languages, but they're not in the same category of programming languages. Though in recent years, the things you can build with them have been converging, especially with JavaScript's recent breakout framework, Node.js, they are definitely vastly different. But alas, here we are. Of all the things that we're going to be talking about today that are considered similarities, this is the one that intertwines the two languages the most, their history. First, let's start with Java. Sun Microsystems released the first public implementation of Java in 1996. Java was actually originally designed for interactive television, which is pretty sweet. But it was too advanced for the digital cable television industry at the time. However, it eventually found its sweet spot in dominating the world of server-side programming. In a nutshell, server-side programming is the part of an application humans don't directly interact with. For instance, the part of Venmo that keeps track of your running balance and calculates your new balance when your stingy friend finally pays you. JavaScript was created by Netscape, the company responsible for the first popular web browser in 1995, and was written in a total of nine days. It was originally named Mocha, later renamed LiveScript and then finally took the name JavaScript and was to be a simple language that would be directly embedded in the HTML of a website, just like CSS. But whereas CSS added some formatting and color to websites, JavaScript added some much needed dynamic interaction. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript made up the trifecta of the web. They powered websites, HTML being the structure, CSS being the decoration, and JavaScript being the interaction. For the first few years of its existence, Netscape reigned supreme in the world of web browsers. But when the Seattle juggernaut software company Microsoft released its version of a web browser, Internet Explorer, Netscape got a little scared because Internet Explorer was super popular. This marked the beginning of what's referred to in internet history as the first browser wars. It would be putting it lightly to say that the Netscape people were freaking out. So what they did is they approached the Sun Microsystem people, the people who created Java, and they hashed out a deal where they'd change the name of the language they'd be developing for the web browser, called Mocha, to JavaScript under a license agreement in exchange for collaborating with Sun to incorporate Sun's programming language, Java, to run inside the web browser Netscape. Netscape did this because it needed to throw everything it could at Microsoft in order to stop the onslaught, so Java seemed like the new hot thing. Now on the flip side of the deal, Sun Microsoft agreed because it saw the internet and web browsers as a potential future platform for Java apps. Next up, let's talk about the defining features of Java and JavaScript. Java is a statically typed language. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. When you boil that tech lingo down, it means that declaring variables in Java is much more rigid than in JavaScript. Let me show you what I mean. Notice how I'm declaring these variables in Java here. I have this name variable up top, and it is a string. Notice how I literally have to say that the type of value that's going to be stored inside the name variable will be a string. Uh, notice how bench press, I have to specifically declare that an integer will be saved to bench press. And for my string array, notice how this string 
bracket thing, that represents that I'm creating an array and it's going to consist of a bunch of strings. In Java, you have to specify the types of values you're going to be saving to a specific variable. Not only that, but once you declare that a variable is a particular type of data, a string for this example, it must remain a string for its entire lifetime. For instance, if I wanted to set the value of New Jersey legend to an integer three, I can't do that in Java. Now compare that to JavaScript, which is a dynamically typed language. You do not have to specify the types of data you're saving to a variable. Notice here how there's nothing about a string being saved in name. It's simply a variable name. Same with bench press, same with my string array. Not only that, but in JavaScript, variables can be reassigned to values with different data types. So last name could easily be changed to a value of four. I don't know why you want to do that. And again, if you wanted to change that last name variable back to have a value of a string, you could totally do that. And JavaScript allows this. Yay. Now JavaScript is considered a prototype-based object-oriented programming language, meaning you're not bound to a code pattern like you are with Java, meaning you have to jump through a lot less hoops in JavaScript than you do with Java. For example, let's try printing out a simple phrase in both languages. Here's a bag of cheese girls. In Java, we have to do a lot. First things first, you're forced to use these things called classes to do anything. Classes serve as reusable templates to produce objects. Objects are just these types of data structures we use in programming to store information. We use objects and classes in programming to model real life situations in our coding world that we're creating. For instance, every website has probably a user class or a user model that we use to kind of model what it's like to be a human being in the real world, but on our website. So for instance, we would use a user class to produce user objects to save in our database for our website. So every user modeled after a real life, you know, me being a human being user situation, I have a first name and you know, I have an appearance, I have a profile picture. What do I look like on your website? I have a birth date and I have a password to log me in to use your website. So back in Java land, we're actually forced to create these templates or these classes in order to create one instance of a particular thing. So for instance, let's say we're creating a dog class. So first we must build that dog factory. And then from that factor, we can build individual instances of dogs, which have, you know, generally speaking, the same attributes, but different value for those attributes. Dogs have different names. Dogs have different breeds. Dogs have different ages, et cetera, et cetera. Java requires a lot of code to do something as simple as printing out, here's a bag of cheese curls. You'll notice that this red box represents this outer public class cheese curls wrapper thing. This is what's known as the class declaration. Remember how I said that Java is a class-based object-oriented programming language? Class-based means that you literally have to wrap everything you ever want to code in, in a class like this. Inside that required class declaration, we then create another function that will automatically get called when our code runs. Then inside that function, what do we want that main function to do? We want to print out to our system, here's a bag of cheese curls. So the red, signifies this kind of class required wrapper that Java code must be written in. The blue box here represents the function that will get automatically called when our code is run. And then what do we want our function to do? Well, inside this yellow box, we're defining printout. Here's a bag of cheese curls. Now you don't need to understand the actual syntax of what I'm showing you. I just want to show you that there's a lot that you have to do just to print something as simple as here's a bag of cheese curls. You have to jump through all of these different hoops just to do something very simple. Now, if you're interested in learning what these words actually mean in the Java language, I've included a little dictionary here. And we also offer a course on codecademy.com covering the basics of Java. And I'm gonna to link to that in the description below as well. Compare that to the simplicity of JavaScript. Look at this. No need to wrap this thing in a function inside a class wrapper. We can just write the thing we want to happen in one line right here. Now recently, JavaScript actually updated to include this kind of similar class construction that we see in other languages, other class-based object-oriented languages like Java, but in no way is JavaScript bound to this construction like Java is. Now, again, you don't need to understand what's going on here. You just need to know that JavaScript is much less verbose. Now, what I'm about to say is a massive generalization, and that's why I'm labeling it as such uh, to all of my more advanced programmers out there before I get shredded to bits in the comments. But in this way, I think JavaScript is much more forgiving than Java earlier on in the process of building out an application. Why do I say early on in the process of building out an application? Because once you've jumped through all of the Java-induced hoops, 
One could also argue that Java's lack of forgiveness means it's less prone to bugs in the long run compared to JavaScript. In other words, Java applications take a lot more time to get off the ground. But once you've kind of set that structure up for your application, the upkeep effort is much less compared to a JavaScript application whose initial time to just spin a simple application up is relatively easy, relatively straightforward. That being said, the level of upkeep required for a JavaScript application increases as time passes. To reiterate what I'm arguing, Java, it's always a slow start, but it has a very stable future compared to JavaScript, which is very easy to get off the ground. But once you have it off the ground and you have this massive application, the upkeep is kind of annoying. Here's a very popular question. What can you build with Java and JavaScript? The thing with Java is it never really came to dominate the desktop or web application sphere, though it can be used for both. Now, it does dominate specific industries and specific technology verticals, including the Android sphere. Many massive industries requiring a very stable language use Java, like banking, trading, the automobile industry. Um, Java can also be used for scientific computing, and it's also used as the language for just general purpose programming of hardware, like the Internet of Things, like a uh, Raspberry Pi or a Sonos speaker or a refrigerator that's connected to the Internet, things like this. Now, JavaScript was originally limited to the web browser. It was kind of seen as a toy language in the beginning. It went hand in hand with HTML and CSS, and these were just languages used to create websites. Originally, it was used to add a dynamic aspect to otherwise very static and boring websites, meaning it was reserved for the front end of a website only, the part of the website that a human being interacts with uh, you know, with their mouse and their or their trackpad and clicking on things and things would happen. Now, that being said, after years of open source development, there are huge robust libraries out there that can extend the capabilities of JavaScript, including Node.js, which allowed developers to finally use JavaScript outside the environment of a web browser. And this has been the new hot thing for startups these days. Things like Facebook, things like Twitter, things like Airbnb, they all use this Node.js JavaScript framework to power their businesses and their technologies. In terms of hiring, Java is preferred in the computer science and enterprise business community. But JavaScript is the new and fresh thing. Startup businesses like Uber, Netflix, they're all making this massive push for JavaScript-based technologies. But large enterprises that have been around for years, things like the banking industry, the automotive industry, Java is kind of your choice. For those reasons, Java pays better than JavaScript, according to the website Challenge Rocket. Now, I'll include a link to that article below. Java requires more time to learn the ins and outs of the language compared to JavaScript. That being said, the technology world is definitely paying attention to JavaScript. Java pays definitely more right now, but who's to say that JavaScript developers won't be demanding the same amount of pay that Java developers get in the near future? Alrighty, folks, so that is it for this video today. That was a very high-level view of the difference between Java and JavaScript. Um, but before I go, I do want to kind of do a little recap here. So in terms of history, uh, Java and JavaScript have a very intertwined relationship at the beginning. JavaScript people needed to ride the waves surrounding Java to hopefully squash Microsoft web browsers, Internet Explorer. The Java people saw web browsers and Netscape as a potential platform for Java's future. Uh, at the beginning, both languages handled different things. JavaScript was able to add some interactivity to websites. Java was to be used for uh, interactive television, but it didn't work out. They did eventually find their sweet spot in the form of server-side computing. In terms of defining features, Java is a statically typed object-oriented language, meaning you need to be explicit with the things you declare and you can't change the values of certain variables. You're also forced to use classes. Um, JavaScript has object-oriented capabilities, but you're not forced to use those classes like you are in JavaScript. What can you build with both of them? Well, Java is better for larger scale projects and enterprise software because it can handle more data, uh, more computing, it's more stable, and it's currently used in the new Internet of Things movement. Um, JavaScript was reserved for the front end of websites in the past. It went hand in hand with HTML and CSS to kind of add some interactivity to otherwise very stable websites. Semi-recently, you can now use JavaScript through Node.js to build applications outside the environment of a web browser. Um, so JavaScript is no longer reserved for the front end aspect of websites. You can now use it to build out the back end component of a website. In terms of hiring, Java still pays more, but JavaScript don't sleep on JavaScript. It definitely has all of the momentum at this time. Okay, so that is it. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.